garden's not looking especially picturesque but I just thought I'd show you um, I'm just planting the fruit trees I've got them soaking over here in the water butt uh, here got their roots keeping wet and they've all got labels on I don't like labels left on trees very much but I'm going to draw a little map of the garden and then once I know where all the fruit trees are which ones which then I'll be able to take the labels off, but I'd better leave them on for now. And I wanted to find a special place for this fruit tree, which or apple tree, I should say, which is uh, called Adam's Pear Main. And ever since I was going to have some fruit trees, there it is, um, I wanted to have an Adam's Pear Main because it's named for my son. Um, well, it wasn't named for my son, but I, it is has got his name. So I wanted to have a, a tree to commemorate him and uh, I've got a rose in the front garden named after my daughter called Emily Bronte and so nice, it's nice to have one for my son as well and my other daughter has got a flower name and there are plenty of poppies around so she doesn't need a really a special poppy for her because their poppies are everywhere and they always remind me of her anyway. So there we are, I shall just um, continue with getting this hole ready and putting plenty of horse manure in and um, making sure it's well watered and then I mulch around with the wood chip. I've got lots of wood chips still in this pile here. That I've been using a lot but it seems to um, be keeping really really well and oh, it's all sorts of plants now even though they look like twigs from a distance when you look closely you see the little leaves coming. That these, This is sea buckthorn. I've put a little cluster of sea buckthorn in here. Well we're not that far from the sea so that's sort of relevant, um, although I think it would be okay in most places actually. And that has an edible orange fruit, uh, which is uh, we can eat, but it's also good for wildlife. I'm sorry it's not looking at all picturesque around and about. I just keep tripping over little baby uh, shrubs and trees, but you know, come back in a few years and you will hopefully see a slightly different scene. But anyway, for now, I'll just get on with this planting with this tree and I might hopefully do a couple more before I go in and have some coffee and tidy up. And um, I'll best do some more tomorrow, I think, because it's not forecast to rain. I don't know why I'm focusing all the, on all this detritus. Um, I haven't got much else to focus on really at the moment, unfortunately. It's looking really pretty. I can show you some more trees with buds that are looking as if they're about to burst into life. Uh, I can't tell you what that one is. What I've done where there are f uh, most of these trees, I've, I've got five of each one when I bought the baby, um, the little bare roots saplings where you get them in bundles of five and so with, I've, what I've done is I've left the label on one of the five and then uh, so I should be able to compare and find out if I'm not sure what the tree is I'll just have a look for one with a label on that looks similar and then that should help me to uh, work out what it is I mean, I was just getting quite excited it, if it will focus to see how a lot of these baby trees have got um, buds on this are really swelling now so it won't be too long before I can show you some really quite exciting progress. Look at this one. I don't know what it is, I'm afraid. But I will. Once the leaves come out, I'll be able to recognise them. So that will be all the more exciting because uh, it will, it will, it, there won't be such a mystery anymore. Even without the labels, it will be possible to see what they are. I know they're very closely planted. I'm sure that it's a, a bit ridiculous to put these two large trees next to each other like this. But there we are. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see what happens. We shall see what happens when they start to grow. And I'm so, really sorry I haven't tidied up all these odd buckets and pails and bright green plastic watering can. I have got a nice metal one, but it's in storage still at my mum's at the moment. So and when I'm able to get that, I'll have something a bit more aesthetic in shot. But look at these little snowdrops. Aren't they lovely? Aren't they absolutely lovely. I, I just planted, I think they're the ones I planted in there that I um, was given in the green, and I'd, I think they are. They, look too, they kind of look too much at home to be the ones I've just planted, but I think they are. So that's nice to know that they're happy. And I should just get on, as I say, before I get, have some coffee. So I shall leave you there. Um, and yeah, there should be some more progress 
and, and I, as, as the spring as the spring advances, I would expect it will be fairly tra transformed. I don't think they'll be get a lot really tall this year, the trees, but they will at least be clothed so we can get an idea more of a little baby woodland. It's Sunday morning now and after yesterday's frosty morning walk I thought I'd like to try our famous last words but I, it's so uh, nice to be up and moving a bit earlier that I'm going to try and have a little walk before breakfast um, well as many days as I can manage I'm not going to uh, make myself say I'll do it every single day but anyway I got up this morning it was not quite as early as it was yesterday and it was frosty when I got up but the frost has is melting now if that's the right word yeah melting and you can hear it dripping off the trees actually in the woods so I'll just show you how the woods are looking so I walk past I'm on the road at the moment as you can see but what I thought I would just quickly do uh, before I go back for my breakfast um, is just to go down to where the wild garlic grows because I was seeing someone on uh, Facebook yesterday saying they'd been making wild garlic pesto and it just seemed so early I hadn't even thought about the wild garlic being up yet so I thought I would just pop down here to just over the bridge where there's usually masses and masses of it and have a look and see whether it's coming on well ready for uh, picking not too far into the future so I'll switch off the camera now and just walk around the bend there and get as far as the little bridge and just over it and I'll we'll have a look and see see yeah, we'll see if there is any I just heard a woodpecker in fact I heard two woodpeckers at the same time so it's lovely to know that they're around don't know whether we'll have one on cue on the camera but um you never know I thought I would just show you as we're passing how much the leaves have come out on the honeysuckle now. So that's a lovely sign of spring as well. Because last time I was looking at them, they were little tight little... They were open, the buds, but they were really tiny leaves. And now they're definitely bigger. I hear lots and lots of dripping as all the, as all the uh, ice and frost is melting as well. Well, here we are on the other side of the bridge, and this is where the wild garlic grows. Uh, well, I'm sure it grows in lots of places, but there's masses of it here in the spring. And last spring, I, I came up lots of times and picked it and made lots of pesto and used it in other ways as well. Anyway, well, I can see that particularly strongly the lords and ladies are growing already. And that's this, which is, uh, I, the real name is Erin Lily, I think. It's also called Cuckoo Pint. And it looks quite similar uh, in a way because it's lush and very similar shades of green, but it has got arrows, sort of pointed um, arrow and heart shape kind of leaves. So, and spotted quite often as well, like this one is. Anyway, so that's not wild garlic. And in fact, you don't want to be mistaking it because that would not be good to eat. I think it's poisonous or certainly um, quite toxic. Anyway, I can, this is the wild garlic. It's not ready yet at all, but it's coming through. There. So that's very really nice to know, because it won't be too long, and there's some more just here. But obviously the leaves will get a lot bigger than this. And more here. Yep, I think we can say, in fact, if I look a bit further along, I think it's actually maybe pickable. Yeah, look. I mean, they're not that big, some of the leaves, but that is all wild garlic. Well, I think if I wanted just smallish leaves and not, you know, obviously not, not pick too much because 
Um, it's not it's not good to pick lots of any one species at a time, but I think if I just came and picked one or two leaves from each plant, it would still keep growing quite happily. And there really is a lot of it. It spreads year after year. Um, I once met the man who told me he'd planted it, or he put lots here anyway, and then he comes and collects it himself every year. He said he'd taken it out of a garden in the village where I live, and he'd been doing some gardening for somebody there. And they had hated this stuff, and it just spreads everywhere, and they just wanted him to get rid of it. So he dug up as much as he could and said he'd get rid of it for them. And he hadn't got a very big garden himself, so he brought it down here. That's what he told me anyway. And, uh, and he comes and collects it. In fact, he hailed me with, what are you doing picking my garlic? <laughs> but anyway, we had a good, he was only like kidding me. And um, we had a nice conversation and he was quite happy with me and my bag of garlic. So uh, that's, um, that's that then. I should go back, put the kettle on and have my breakfast and have a cup of coffee. First cup of coffee of the day. And then I, I can tell the mist will clear. The sun's trying to come through. And there's lots more gardening to do today, so I shall leave you there.